No, white people be in this ghetto. What's going on with all this violence during Black Women's Black Ramadan month? This is ghetto. Diamonds on my body and they crystal clear. I make magic with these hundreds, watch them disappear. Uh huh. We gon' rain drop some in my ear. If you gon' name drop, let's get it clear. Jesse, woo! BBS. I just turn the water on. We gon' flex. Shit you never saw before. These niggas chasing me like waterfalls. What's up, y'all? It's your sister. Welcome back to my Chanel. If you are new here, make sure that you subscribe to join the Black Women's Tribe during Black Women's. What is what is April's Black Women's Month? Oh my God, we're out of Black Women's Black History Month. Are we still in Ramadan? We still in Ramadan, right? Alexa, is it still Ramadan? Girl, I can't hear you, child. Okay, so Ramadan, it, okay, Ramadan is over April 9th. Oh my God, so we still have like another week or so, another couple days. All right, so it's still Black Women's Black Ramadan Month. Shout out to all my Mubarak. What is it? Mubarak, um, what do we say during Ramadan? Hold on. Okay, so Ramadan Mubarak to all y'all, to all my black women, to all my black Ramadan Mubarak people. Um, shout out to y'all, you know, Christians, we just went through our Holy Week and we just had Easter and that was really good. Side note, I went on a first date this past weekend and it was to church for Easter. <laughs> Have y'all ever gone on a first date with somebody and it was church? It was interesting to say the least. Um, I really enjoyed it. So listen, if I pop up, if I pop up Mary this year, just just remember this video. All right, remember this video. Um, but anyway, y'all, Ramadan Mubar, we still in Black Women's Ramadan Month. Um, so make sure that you like, share, subscribe if you are new here. Uh, and if you are a returning sister, thank you so much. You know, I love you. I went to this brand dinner and I think it was the best brand dinner I've ever been to. Camille Rose threw us a Black Women's History Month dinner. Good evening, everybody. So many wonderful looking black women. We got the white women's in here. <laughs> Janelle, who's the owner of it, did such a such a good job. Like, they took us to this restaurant called Carmel. Very nice food, very nice ambiance, and the guest list was really really nice. You know, we had formalities. We got up, we had our sisterhood moments. You know, we had our you know black sister, I love you moments. You know, and then you had Janelle who honored us, who thanked us for being there. I appreciate you guys for coming out. I appreciate you guys for supporting me, Camille Rose. And then all of a sudden, Cash Money Records took over for the 99 and the 2000s. And baby, heads were bowed down and not in prayer, okay? Heads were bowed down, asses were tooted up. <laughs> Janelle really created a space for us to honor each other as black women, women period. It was some white women in the room, but <laughs> she created a space for us to honor each other. She created a space to honor us. She spent money on us. And when I say that, I have to emphasize that because I've been to several brand dinners and you wouldn't believe the brands that will throw events for women here in Atlanta and won't spend money on us. It's like, they want the black women's following, they want the black women views, but they don't wanna pay to take care of the black woman. It's so obvious sometimes. As black women, yes, we're smart. Yes, we're savvy. Yes, we are business minded. Yes, we are talented. Yes, we love the finer things in life, but also we like to twerk. And I think that twerking, black women getting together and twerking is so, look down upon these days. I really don't get it because it's just in our blood. We get together, we do the pleasantries. Hey girl, how are you? We have our nice dinners, we share information, we plan on partnering together, and then we shake ass. That's what we love to do as black women. Like we actually like to have a good time. And I feel like Camille Rose created that space for us to do all those things in one. This was the best brand dinner I have ever been to. I just wanted to share that with you all. And I hope that other brands, if this comes across anybody else's timeline, 
I hope you guys know that black women are worth you spending a bag on. And when you come to Atlanta, if you're not coming with that Camille Rose energy, keep it. Cheers to Camille yeah. Rose for respecting yeah. our artistry yeah. and showing us that we matter. In addition to the Camille Rose event, I also went to uh, Yandy's Yell opening at Bloomingdale's as well. Here's a little bit of footage from that. We are super excited. Yeah. Actually, are in Bloomingdale. Yes. Can believe it. Yes. Is this so pretty? I wanted to give you a fairy godmother. I love it. Impossible. 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 <laughs> the world is full of zany and fools who don't believe in rules and don't believe in what some people say. be doing a giveaway for Yell products and Camille Rose products in my members only. So if you join, you should be able to see a, a button that says join next to my name on YouTube. I don't know if it shows up that way if you're watching this from your phone, but I know on your laptop, your computer, or your tablet, you should be able to see a button that says join. If you join and become a member, you'll get way more footages, <laughs> footages, and uh, I'm going to be doing giveaways and just uploading more personal content up there. And you'll also be able to see some of your other favorite YouTubers as well. Um, but yeah, so become a member for more fun stuff. Let's get into it. Cowboy Carter. She's taking it. Like, she is taking it. Cowboy Carter is really that girl. I know it's early, but but I'm going to go ahead and say this during Black Women's Black Ramadan Month. Um, Cowboy Carter is better than Renaissance. Is it safe? I know how y'all get down, baby. <laughs> uh, Cowboy Carter is better than Renaissance, and I'm not here to argue with you. Please go argue with your alopecia having ass daddy with his squiggly ass edges. I don't care, okay? It is better than Renaissance, period. As I was listening to Cowboy Carter, I kept thinking about Tina Turner's 1984 Private Dancer album, and Reason being, I feel like there are so many parallels between Cowboy Carter and Private Dancer. You have two black women, right, who are reclaiming two genres that were created by black people. And what I love about the way they're doing it is they're doing it as themselves, okay? Think back to Tina Turner. Tina Turner didn't start singing rock and roll with a rock and roll voice. Tina Turner always had a big voice. One of my favorite songs from Tina Turner is River Deep, Mountain High. When I was a little girl, I had a rag doll. The only doll I ever known, you know? And she was just so big voiced on that, right? And when you hear her do What's Love Got To Do With It, She's not singing any different. She's just singing with this confidence, knowing that she's singing music that belongs to her. And I don't know why, but as I was listening to Cowboy Carter, I felt the spirit of Tina Turner in the sense that Beyonce isn't putting a country twang. She's not trying to sound like anybody else. She wasn't lying when she said this was a Beyonce album because she's singing as Beyonce. She's not giving you no country accent. She's, she's just singing as Beyonce. And what I love about Cowboy Carter, it is so all night long coded. And for those of y'all who know what I'm talking about, we're already talking about how this album might be better than Lemonade. But I'm going to go a step further and tell you this album is Lemonade Coded. My favorite song on Lemonade has always been All Night Long. 
all night long. You love all night long. Like I've always loved that song. When you listen to her sing on this album, it is all night long coded. The feathery vo vocals, the way she layers the her the way she layers her harmonies in the background. It is very all night long coded. All night long, you hear her sing soft, then she sings hard, then she pulls you back. You know, that's what Cowboy Carter is. There are some songs when you're literally hearing her sing opera on Daughters. You know what I mean? That is lemonade coded. This is not Beyonce singing new. This is Beyonce as Beyonce. And when so when she said this was a Beyonce album, she wasn't lying. And so this being a country album, for this for for this to be a country album, it's giving, you know what else too? The parallels that I hear between Cowboy Carter and Private Dancer is, you know, Private Dancer was Tina's rock, you know, rock era beginning, right? But there was still so much funk in there. There was still, like, it was still, you know, Tina Turner and Ike and them coded. And so the parallels for me between Private Dancer and Cowboy Carter, you are seeing two Black women sing music that belongs to them with their God-given confidence. You're seeing two Black women who are owning genres that belong to their ancestors and they're doing it so well and they're doing it at, and they're doing it as themselves and that's what makes palm colored people angry because they don't have to pretend to be something that they're not they are just approaching these genres with their unapologetic blackness i love it um what is your favorite cowboy carter song Mine is Protector. Mine is Protector. I know, I know y'all love Jolene. You know, we went from Dolly P back in the 70s, St. Jolene, 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 Jolene. I'm begging you, please don't take my man. And then you got Beyonce coming in and she's saying, Jolene, sit your puss ass down. Sit your puss ass down. Please don't make me call Portia. I better yet, don't make me call Solange, <laughs> okay? Girl, come here if you want to. You don't want these problems, bird. Go sing your tune somewhere else, all right? Uh, it's Beyonce reminding Jolene that she is a banshee bitch from Louisiana. And that is so Haitian coded. Y'all do know you Creole people are Haitian, right? I'm a banshee Creole bitch from Louisiana. She Haitian. Beyonce was telling Jolene, bitch, I'm Haitian, okay? I will put goat blood in your spaghetti and turn you into a motherfucking a damn chicken. Play with me if you want it, okay? What for conjoge, okay? What conjoge? What chef? What chef souffle? What for conjoge? That was a very what for conjoge moment, okay? That was a moment, okay? She not playing. Y'all do know that Beyonce is Haitian, right? Y'all do know, like, y'all Creole people, y'all do know, like, we, we cousins, right? Okay, cool. Um, but my favorite song is Protector. I cry like a baby listening to that song. And I will lead you down that road if you lose your way. Wanna be a protector. Uh -huh. That's my song. Protector. Protector High. Where y'all at? Protect the hive. Where are y'all at? I know I'm not alone. That is my favorite song on the album. Favorite song on the album, hands down. Let me know what favorite what what. Let me know what your favorite song is. Um, I didn't know I needed a song. I I, I didn't know that I needed a Miley Cyrus and Beyonce duet. I'll be your shotgun rider till the day I die. Till the day I die. Come on now, somebody. She dying. She is dying on the record. Somebody please check on Beyonce. Her heartbeat is failing. She is... Die. 
She dying, y'all. She is dead. What are we having at the repast? <laughs> okay? Like, the delivery of that? I'm sorry. I didn't know that I would enjoy. I never even thought I would enjoy a Beyonce and Post Malone duet. Like, what? Who the fuck thought? Who, who put them two together? Whose idea was this? Whose idea was this? Well, I'll let you be my Levi jeans so you can hug that ass all day long. What? Call me pretty little thing. Cause I love to turn them on. Like, what? Ooh. Just, just shut up. Y'all say shut up. I'm, I'm, shut up. For real. Just shut up. I'm, I'm done. Um, yeah, Cowboy Carter is great. Now, now I did see this thread on threads. It said it's official after more than a decade, Beyonce has been knocked out of the Trinity. So Beyonce being the self-titled album. So Beyonce, the self-title has been knocked out of the Trinity. And they said Lemonade, Renaissance, and Cowboy Carter are her top three albums. And when I saw this, I was just like, why doesn't the Beehive acknowledge Black as King? Like, what? Can we have a real conversation about that? And, and I, I thought of that. I said, why doesn't the beehive acknowledge black as king? Somebody said xenophobia. <laughs> Somebody said xenophobia. Y'all don't like Africans, okay? If y'all are still calling us African booty scratches, let us know. <laughs> um, but yeah, is that what it is? Y'all y'all still, still not fucking with Africans? We all ain't Simon Child. But black as king, like... So, so why don't y'all, no, but can we have a real conversation? Why don't y'all acknowledge Black is King? And someone was saying, well, it is because Black is King was a soundtrack that went along to the movie that y'all don't like. Now, we all know we ain't like the movie, okay? We, did, we didn't like the Lion King remake, okay? Let me know if you ever watched the Lion King remake again after initially watching it. I didn't. Didn't care for it. It wasn't better than the original but Black is King was amazing. Like, ah, ah, ah. like, so, so y'all don't like Afro beats, Beyonce? No one a king with the king in a way. No one a king with the king in a way. No one a king with the big body. No one a king with the big body. <laughs> y'all don't like Afro beats, Beyonce? You know what? Maybe it is in a phobia. Somebody in my threads also was like, well, us acknowledging Black is King is like us acknowledging the Proud Family jingle. Now, hold on. See, and y'all will say, I'm like, as a beehiver, for you to compare Black is King to the Proud Family jingle, even though it was a bop. <laughs> well, we're not going to disrespect the Black, the, we're not going to disrespect the Proud Family jingle. You and me will always be tied. Family, every single day and night. Even when you start acting like a fool. You know I love it every single day you do. I love you more than anybody else. Like, we're not going to disrespect Solange and Beyonce, what they did on that. Like, that was family, family, proud family. Like, we're not going to do that. We're not going to disrespect my childhood. That's what we're not going to do. Okay? So, but, yeah, why don't y'all like Black is King? Can we have that discussion? Now, I will say, Renaissance to me, I, I was never a big fan of Renaissance, just being honest. Like, I get what it did. Like, I get what it did. I get the messaging, but Renaissance, did, it, it didn't move me like that. Like, it, it, it didn't move me like this. Like, Cowboy Carter is it. Cowboy Carter is it. And, and then also, too, the fact that she put all these black artists from country music on these songs, I think that's amazing. Somebody had threaded how, you know, um, everybody's um, monthly listeners had jumped tremendously because of being on this album. And I think that's great. Um, there are so many writers and so many contributors to this album. And 
it looks like she's slowly rolling that out, but then you're seeing people like John Batiste come out or you're seeing, you know, um, just different producers come out and say, I had the pleasure of doing this or I had the pleasure of singing background, background vocals. So I, I, that's just one thing I will say that's my only critique when it comes to Beyonce. Beyonce doesn't like to acknowledge other writers. <laughs> my, my sister's a Virgo. Like she... I think she has a perfection complex and I think she kind of just holds herself in this perfect place and it's like girl it's okay it's okay to girl it's okay to share it it's okay to share it first of all they're never gonna be you so it's cool to let us know who else wrote this you know what I mean like it's okay it's, it's cool um but I like that people are coming out and saying like they contributed this they contributed that I like that and um I don't know. I just, this album to me is just, it's great. It's such a great album. Blackbird with the other singers on there with Tanner and, and you know, these other singers. Tyrant, there's somebody singing with Beyonce on Tyrant. I really want to know who that is. That person singing background with her is, they hold that shit down. Like, it's amazing. Cowboy Carter to me, it's just, it is an amazing amazing piece of work amazing piece of work better than renaissance and for me i would say her top three albums for me like my top three beyonce albums are lemonade black is king cowboy carter favorite top three um beyonce albums let me know your thoughts okay let's talk a little bit about some reality television stuff so last week was so much with the diddy stuff i didn't even get to touch on the reality tv girls okay so real housewives of potomac even though i don't really talk about it on here i do watch it but this season to me was the worst season ever like it was the worst season i've ever watched on that show it was not enjoyable at all let me know your thoughts on this particular season of real housewives of potomac that's coming to an end now um I think some of the things that made it horrible for me is just the Nigerian shrine thing, first of all. I think it just was stupid as fuck. Like, that girl NECA, there could have been so much potential there for NECA, but she held on to this Nigerian shrine storyline the entire season. And here's the thing, it's like, I'm all for a, you know, yo mama, yo mama. Like, I'm from Dade County. Your mama, right? But when you go out of your way to lie on somebody's mom, mind you, this person is not on the cast, okay? Second, we don't give a fuck. Like, we literally just don't give a fuck. And then you're like, literally like, ready to spite your own face to make a point that nobody gives a fuck about. It's just, it just was dumb. It just was stupid. The entire Nigerian shrine moment was dumb as hell. Like, and here's the thing. Let's say Wendy's mom did do a shrine. We don't care. We actually just don't care. Wendy's mom is not part of the cast. If Wendy's mom don't like you and she feels like you're messing with her daughter, if she wants to pray seven days, seven nights, if she want to build a shrine, she could do that. We don't care. But when you go out of your way to make it a xenophobic storyline, and the reason why I say xenophobic is because then you saw all the other non-African women joining in and, oh my God, that's what Nigerians do. That's what the Africans doing over there. Oh my God, like, I believe it. You know, they did say that Wendy in her village, that it just was stupid. You had Giselle acting like she doesn't understand the prayers of a mother when the prayer when the, when the mom is praying over their child and somebody attacking their child as if you weren't married to Jamal Bryant. Like, let's be for real. And I say that as somebody who's good friends with Jamal Bryant. He's a pastor. You mean to tell me that for all your years as first lady, you never saw anybody in your church passionately praying, interceding for their children? Like, that's what black parents do. That's what parents, period, do. They pray for their children, especially when they feel like their children are under attack. And so watching Giselle like feed into the xenophobia was dumb. Candace, to me, I just... Candace, to me, 
since the whole Monique thing, she just hasn't been enjoyable to watch. I think she's smart. I think she's funny. Like she was co-hosting um, Angela Yee's show the last couple of weeks and she's been doing a really good job. I think she's good at that. But on the show, she's just not a pleasure to watch. It's just always a social issue with her. And although I stand by her when she talks about all the, the colorism that she's faced on the show, there's no doubt that Giselle and Robin have been very, very much colorist on the show. That's not something that Candace had to say. That's something that people who have watched the show have seen the way they tend to treat women of darker, darker skin tones and how they tend to just paint them to be violent, basically. But while that's true, I just I feel like Candace just spends most of her time trying to police these women, trying to school them. And it's like, girl, we're not watching Real Housewives for that. We're watching Real Housewives for fun shade. You know what I mean? Like we're watching it for fun shade, for great experiences. Then it's like y'all went down to the Dominican Republic and that trip that y'all took down to the Dominican Republic where y'all was at this resort with no headboards on your beds. It's like, where's the budget? Where's the budget? Of course, that was a trip that Robin put together. So I, I understand there was no budget because we know she ain't got no money. But it's like, it's just not giving fun shade and luxury which is what i used to watch what i used to watch the housewives franchises for it's just lost it there's no fun shade everything is deeper than it has to be there's no luxury like i i don't watch any of these women and think wow i'd love to be them and that's the problem when i first started watching real housewives especially real, real housewives of atlanta i wanted to be nini i wanted to be portia like i wanted to be candy I don't see any of these shows and think I want to be y'all. Except for Real Housewives of Beverly Hills. But I don't want to look at white women and be like, oh, I want to be like that. It's not given that. So where is it where I'm going to see black women carrying these franchises and making somebody like me feel like I want to be them? I'm not seeing it. Um, Mia turned out to be the star. Who the fuck would have thought Mia would become the star of Potomac. She's literally like the Porsche of the franchise. Literally. Literally. And you know why? Say what you want about Mia. Mia gives it all. She gives her unaltered reality. And that's what those productions want. They want your reality. They want to be able to manipulate your reality for their storyline. This whole thing where she told us about how you know, Gordon had the prostate issues and, you know, he had lost a testicle and then, you know, you know, his, 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 you know, his wee wee started doing gang signs and then, you know, the, he had the limp dick and while he had the limp dick, she went back to the whole old nigga. And then now like we're finding out that her eight year old son might not be Gordon's son, that it's most likely Ink's son. And then you got her and Gordon on, on screen, and she's like, well, you're not being fair, and he's like, bitch, you want fair? Go down to the carnival. Like, that is reality television gold. They're giving us all of them. And then you have Wendy down to the reunion. Um, Just want to make sure, uh, you know, Gordon had told us he came to the house to, you know, uh, he, he said that ain't, you know, Gordon had told us ain't came down to the house to get his son back because he believes that's his son. And then you have Mia who didn't deny it. Shout out to Wendy. Wendy was like, no, we're going to get all the tea out on the table. <laughs> Before we go to commercial break, baby, we're going <laughs> to... The doctor clock in, baby, okay? That's entertainment. That's entertainment. And um, that's what I want to see next season. So we did hear that Candace quit. How do y'all feel about Candace quitting? I think it's great. I think she needs a break. I think I, this show doesn't do anything positive for Candace. Candace is actually very talented. She's a good actress. If you guys have watched her act, she's a very good actress, very good vocalist. She has what it takes to get to the next level. I would love to see her on Broadway. Like, girl, go do you. And maybe come back later on. But go do you. I think that her and her husband are trying to conceive. Being under all that stress, it's not good for somebody who's trying to conceive. Girl, go ahead and just go be with your family. Period. Go be with your family. Um, Robin got fired. Candace quit. Robin got fired. 
That's great. And guess what? Just like her tagline, I, I just took a DNA test and it proved that I 100% don't care about you being on the show either, baby. Take your ass and go, okay? Hey, you won't be missed. Hey, whoa. Take your ass. Oh, we do not give a fuck. Um, but yeah, let me know what you guys think about um, The Real Housewives of Potomac and where it's going. Mia is the star, y'all. Mia is the damn star. That's crazy. And speaking of, you know, the stars of a franchise, we all know Porsche's going back to Housewives of Atlanta. Um, I was so lost in Love is Blind stuff that I stopped covering it. But we've seen all the stuff that's going on with Simon, and we did talk about it on Dish Nation. So check your local listings to make sure that you're checking out Dish Nation every night. Um, but, yeah, I will say this. Because Simon has been exposed for sending DMs to different blogs, and he also did that to Dish Nation as well, like sending DMs to post this to post that. Any one of you girls who are getting into reality television if your man is thirsty for the cameras he's not the guy for you just a bit of advice dollar property but here is the gag true entertainment hasn't filmed a single scene at the gag okay no no diddy no diddy no 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 not that kind of gag. Not that gag. okay they haven't filmed anything at the house, so what's he even talking about? My thing with, with, with this thing, too, is, you know, Porsche's the GOAT because in their prenup, it is outlined that should uh, one of them file for divorce, the other person has 30 days to get out of the home. And so she filed for divorce, so by their prenup, Ooh. he was supposed to leave the home. He's yeah. being petty. Now, she wanted to film PJ's birthday party there last weekend. That's why he sent that cease and desist. So not only are you trying to ruin her bag, you're trying to ruin her daughter's birthday. Exactly. Portia is the GOAT. Period. Because she made sure that in case anything happens, she that match is hers, baby. Period. Yo, back to it's back hard. With her story and other girls, yo, women is out here getting a villainy Listen. on. Curls, mustache. Like, whoa. Okay, let's go over to Selling Sunset. So Chelsea Lascani filed for divorce from her husband. How do y'all feel about that? Now, y'all know I've always been Team Chelsea. Um, I felt that on the show, when it came to Brie, she just expressed a lot of the things that the viewers expressed and also things that the other cast members expressed as well. They just were not as overt with it as she was. Now, I already see people saying, oh, well, damn, you was over there saying all that shit about Brie and you had this going on. Let the record show Chelsea filed for divorce because she thinks her husband cheated. I'm not saying y'all ain't got a point, but let's pay attention to what's being said. Chelsea filed for divorce from her husband because she thinks he cheated. Okay? So her overview on marriage and all those things, it still stands. Whereas you have Brie, who is willing to be part of a harem of women. Okay? Not saying that anybody's wrong or right. But what I'm saying is, Chelsea being the one to file for divorce because she thinks, because <laughs> she thinks her husband cheated. I think that says a lot about who Chelsea is and that she don't play that, okay? So I think we should take that into account. But um, let me know what you guys think about that. Also, too, what's going on with the other girl, Christina from Selling Sunset? Hold on, because she been in the news too, bitch. Hold on, like, no, we in white people news. Hold on. Hold on, okay. Christine Quinn makes first public appearance since husband's arrest. All right, so do y'all remember Christine Quinn? She was the one that everybody loved to hate on the show. Okay, so Christine Quinn called cops over claim her estranged husband, Christian Richard, bugged her hotel room. My God. Christine Quinn filled for her, feared her estranged husband, Christine Richard. Christian Richard was secretly spying on her following arrest so she placed a call to the police earlier this week page six can confirm a spokesperson for los angeles uh, county sheriff's department tells us the selling sunset alum called them just before midnight on tuesday and claimed the tech entrepreneur had bugged her hotel room when cops arrived at the hotel in west hollywood we're told they found no evidence of criminal activity and therefore no official report was written girl this is a lot so let's go back to his arrest this was back on the 20th of march 
Christine Quinn's husband arrested for domestic violence led out of home handcuffed and barefoot in bathrobe. Christine Quinn's husband, Christian Richard, was arrested for domestic violence on Tuesday afternoon. Page six can exclusively reveal. The Los Angeles Police Department tells us officers responded to a call at around 2 p.m. local time in Hollywood Hills uh, area of LA relating to a domestic dispute. The suspect threw a bag containing a glass bottle at the victim, missed the victim, but hit the victim's child causing injury. Oh my God. The public information officer told us the child was seen by paramedics, but not transported to the hospital. Oh my Lord. Oh my God. This is embarrassing. Oh, child. Oh, this is ghetto. No, white people be in this ghetto. He was wearing only a bathrobe at the time of his arrest. Child, he ain't had no drawers on or nothing. And barefoot, no shoes on or nothing. Um, however, a separate source tells page six that the child whom we can confirm was Quinn's son was transported to the emergency room via an ambulance. Yeah, that makes sense because he hit the baby. You gotta get the baby to the hospital. Christine left the house and rode in an ambulance with her son. Quinn, 35, has been married to Richard since 2019. They share a two-year-old son who is named after his father, Christian George de Montet. Uh, damn, this is embarrassing. And I think he's in tech too, just like um, Chelsea's husband. What's up with the tech guys? I thought, I thought nerds were safe to be with. What is going on? But do y'all think Christine should come back to Southern Sunset? I think she should come back because obviously your marriage is failing so Girl, just come on back, child. Just come on. I actually miss her in Southern Sunset. I know she was like a villain, but I really do feel like sometimes the other girls just gave her way, 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 way too much. Way too much. Um, Let me know what y'all thoughts are on this. This is, child, this is ghetto. What's going on with all this violence during Black Women's Black Ramadan month? This is ghetto. All right, y'all, I just want to make a quick video for y'all. The longer videos will be following this one. But you know, it's a new month. I hope that... While we're still in Black Women's Black Ramadan Month, that um, you guys are gonna have a blessed April. Make sure that you put God first in everything that you do. Um, and yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. These diamonds on my body and they crystal clear. I make magic with these hundreds, watch them disappear. Uh-huh. Big ol' raindrops up in my ear. If you gon' name drop, let's get it clear. Jesse, woo!